Mike's live. Hi, how are you? Oh, really? I'm, oh, yeah, I'm brilliant, thank you. <laughs> what did you do, Craig? I don't know, they just cut to me there. <laughs> I do you wave I, I waved, I went, hi. Yes, I did. I said, Ed. Well, this isn't awkward. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to Crafters TV. We've come alive, haven't we, uh, in the hour? I mean, we, were, we, we weren't quite crying, but we were very subdued for Colour Me Happy. Uh, but we are back with a masterclass, uh, and it's an amazing masterclass. It's going to be all about the edgeables, one of the most popular um, genres, genres of dyes that we bring to you here at Crafters TV. Uh, it's an edgeable genre. Uh, and Craig is back with me, just rearranging his hair. Are you excited for this genre of genre? show? Genre? I am indeed, yeah, all about the edgeables here. Variety of different ones. Let's have a look and see some Ooh, of the things yes. that you can be doing. And uh, this was actually one that I done during the, the launch of these ones. These ones are the delicate borders. This one is the daisy. In actual fact, we're going to be using the daisy within the first demonstration. We've got your dragonflies. So you can use them at the base of your card. They could be the edgeable of the card. But then what you can also do is use them in conjunction with your easel cards or concept cards, whatever you like, you can be doing that. Then we have got our other I love that one. border dies. This one here. I forgot, I've forgotten, yeah. These are the modern edgeables. Brilliant. So these are a little bit bigger, a little bit chunkier, but really good for paper piecing if you want. So you can start to layer upon the top or you can be using them as a edgeable. Something something along the lines what we're going to do later on, but with the, the bow and we'll do some paper piecing as well. We've got our huge sentiments as well. These are fab. Everyday word edgeables for these ones here. I so love these, these ones. Cut from the so the happy at the top there, that actually cuts from the back of your card. So it cuts out and then your base layer here cuts into your card. So lots of scope for paper piecing, doing any little bit of fussy cutting if you want to, to then take it out of your cardstock. But it means you can then do it onto the edges if you want to, do them at angles. You can then cherry pick sections if you like. And then something that we've not got a lot of is our double sided edgeables here. We're going to be having a look at them as well within this masterclass here. So use them at the top of the card or you can still be using them so they're going to hold your card into place there. What these do is these give you a matte and layer but it's one pass through the Gemini for your double sided plates. One pass through it's going to cut that foreground it's going to cut that background as well one pass and then that is the die cut and done so we'll show you them too well i'm 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 feeling excited i'm feeling Good. inspired i'm feeling ready for a rather spectacular masterclass that's what we're going to have and you guys are as well because lots of you are tuning in saying hi sam mcdonald says good afternoon all from what looks like it's going to pour down in darlington it does i was just out the the back on the the um very um I was going to say the terrace. I wasn't. I was sat <laughs> outside next to the container, uh, and I thought to myself, "Yes, it looks like it's going to rain." Uh, I was going to call it the the purple sun terrace. Yeah, uh, that's what I like to call it. Someone's been doing a spot of paint, and I noticed when I drew up. What this is morning. going on? Yeah, I yeah, saw what that. Is it? I wonder if the lovely Caitlin can shed any light on what was happening. It looks right. like a skate park out there. <laughs> Doesn't it? It does. We're I mean, go that far. Where's the youths is what I was thinking but when I was out there earlier. some bright colours on the wall. Loads of bright colours all on the wall, yeah. That, or the graffiti artists are very refined in Newton Aitcliffe. One Bounties of the two. about... <laughs> this is... We're setting the tone quite badly. Um, Kathy Lear says, hello, everyone. Uh, hi, Craig and Gio. Panda hi. Crafts is saying hi as well. So you just sat down in the garden sun listening to the killers in sunny... Doncaster. I'm going to see the killers next Saturday, Panda Crafts. Um, yes. Don't know why I felt the need to tell you, but I am. Uh, Jim says, oh, hi, all again. Been to Chesterfield Branch. Bought the original Gemini as my Gemini Junior. Uh, went to Crafty Heaven. Um, oh, I, I've found out why it's painted at the back, and I'm not allowed to tell you. It is top secret information. If you want to know, Craig, 
get yes. yourself in the so CTV social comments WhatsApp group, you'll see. Gotcha. Um, very, very exciting. Um, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. I know you want to know. Uh, Pam E says, good morning. Craig Joe and crew from central New York as well. I'm not going to show this to you. I'm going to show this to you. Uh, <laughs> just over here. It is your weekend super saver. Uh, the brilliant thing about this is we love to bring you a weekend super saver. We bring you a wonderful selection of products at an amazing deal, but only for the weekend. It looks like a mystery bag online, but we were just feeling in a very revealing mood. Now, you are gonna get, so these two items here, the um, luxury card from the Secret Garden and also the Stamps and Dice from the Secret Garden, those two alone, 30 pounds. So really, the rest of it's coming to you for free and the rest of it, worth 70 pounds or 82 dollars. So you're gonna get some Stamps and Dice from Farmhouse, a lovely sentiment from Farmhouse and a wax seal kit. We've also got some Nature's Garden Be Beautiful, one of your panel dies and some stamps and dies from Autumn Blessings in there. So if you don't own those collections, it's a real nice mixed bag. You can also, uh, if you are spending 50 pounds or more, get some extra pennies off this weekend, which is lovely. But this also must end at midnight tonight, wherever you are. And it is the spend more, save more. So if you spend 10 pounds or dollars, no, you spend 50 pounds or dollars, you'll save 10. I've done that all weekend, haven't I? Spend 100 pounds or dollars, you will save 20. Or spend 30 pounds or dollars, no, spend £150 of dollars, you will save 30 I should say it the other way around. I should say save 10 when you spend 50 save 20 when you spend 100 save 30 when you spend 150 Very simple. It's much simpler than I've made it sound. Just make sure you are using the specific code. I feel like a flight attendant. The nearest exit may be behind yeah, you. Yeah. Here, here yeah, and yeah. here. Coloured lighting will lead your way to the nearest exit. Uh, I will be coming through the cabin to make sure that your shoes match your outfit. Um, don't forget also cartload. Um, we had one on Thursday, an amazing Sarah cartload. We've kept some of the deals live for you for the rest of the weekend. You'll find all of those under the Shop the Day page uh, on the on the home page of the website. There's a lot going on. There's a lot there to get lots. through, isn't there? If you want to get in touch with me, you can do so in all the normal ways. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion if you are a crossover on YouTube. Yeah. Other than that, sit back, relax, enjoy the flight and welcome aboard it's this be Crafters a bumpy TV ride. flight to fabulous. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a bumpy ride. Yeah, sudden turbulence at any point over the next yeah. two hours, I'm suspecting. Let's have a look at these. The total, oh dear, I'm hearing in, the, in my ear. Uh, let's have a look at these the timeless borders that we've got just here so you're going to get the i beg your pardon i never promised you a rose garden uh which is oh, that like, one what there. i was going to say that's it's called rose one. garden flourishing foliage oh buckle up it's already a bumpy ride uh you've got your schmetterlings in there as well those gorgeous butterflies you've got the dancing dragonflies in there uh the ditzy daisies and also the wild flowers. I will not be bringing the cart out and providing refreshment, unfortunately. If I could, I absolutely would. If you want to go, if you want to go and see those, no, if you want to grab those, head over to the website, 3835 4775, or we'll get you those. Uh, just over 30 pounds or 38 dollars if you are a platinum member. Um, Pandacraft says yes, Joe. The killers are great. They're on at the Doncaster Football Stadium on Tuesday. They're practicing. Oh, hang on. She can actually hear the the kill, real killers. The real she, killers. I thought you meant you were listening to the killers on the radio, Pandacross. No, she's in her back garden. They're sound checking at Doncaster Football Club. Oh. Where they are on Tuesday. She says she thinks it's a practice. Uh, they're having a practice run because that's where they start their tour on Tuesday. Yeah. Amazing. That's so, so cool. I'm seeing them at the Emirates Stadium, which I had to Google, Craig, to find out. Not As not a football fan, didn't know where that was. No. And it is the Arsenal Football Club Stadium, I found uh -huh. out. Is that them that sings I Predict a Riot? Sorry? No, that's the Kaiser Chiefs. The Killers are... I'm Mr. Brightside. Jersey, turn it for signal. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, that's um, a good right side to life. They're a great, uh, great, great, great band. I've seen them live a few times. Yeah, absolutely incredible band. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Lee Ruggs says, good morning, Craig, Joe, CCT and all my crafty friends from Maine. Looking forward to the show, as am I. I've waffled on long enough, I think we should probably get on with it, don't you, Craig? It's my time to waffle now. Yeah. Here we go, right. These so, were on the 12th of May. They did. Do you know who launched them? You. I did. Hey. Absolutely. So, I actually kick-started the demo uh, when we launched them with the Ditsy Daisies, and that's what we're going to do right now. Use the Ditsy Daisies. So, if you want to go back onto the 12th, 
afterwards, of course, and uh, see what we've done on launch day, then you can do. But what I've got is the Ditsy Daisy. So we've got the border die here. And I've got two pieces of watercolour card, both of which I've cut to two and a half by six and a quarter inches. There's a reason it's been watercoloured, and that is because we are going to do a little bit of watercolour in. So instead of using them on the edge of a card, or the top fold of a card, we're using them in a slightly different way with it being a master class. So what I'm doing is I'm getting as, well, right up to the edge of my cardstock. If you're new to or edgeables, or edgeables in general, you've got all your die cut detail, you've got your outline edge that will cut away, but your opposite edge, so to you on the screen right now, it looks as though it's the right hand edge, but of course, because you cut by turning over, it's the left hand edge. There's no cutting edge there, so that'll stay within your card. With our timeless border dies, what we've got, every single one of them in the collection, have got these little pin prick details. So what that enables you to do is uh, find th uh, thread in with your, your thread, your needles if you want, or what you can do is just go in with a really fine art liner and join the dots together and that gives you a faux stitched effect if nice. you want to. It's optional, you don't have to do it, but that is one of the intentions with the little detail. So once again, I'm gonna go right to the edge of my card because this is what's going to cut away and then this is gonna stay in place. And using my glass mat, it's a little bit of a guide to line up because I do want it relatively straight. So once I get it into position, I'm going to pop my tape down here and then into here. And I'm going to use my Gemini Junior. Good thing with this concept card that we're going to do, you are able to do this within your Gemini Mini or your Go if you want because we're doing them on separate panels. But of course, we're just going to feed that one up and then run that one through. We're going to do the same again with that other piece. But I've gone in with some of my aqua pens here. I've gone in with spice, I've gone in with peach, and I've gone in with sage. And instead of going in with a water brush, what I've done is I've gone in with a clear sparkle overlay. Very nice. And then that's going to add a nice little bit of subtle sparkle and colour. But it's going to give us more of a, a pastel tone. We can take these ones off and then at the edge, all we need to do is just nick up to the cutting line, nick at the top there. And then what we're left with, let's bring in a bit of black card so you can see a lot bit easier. So you've got all of the dainty diesel, dainty diesel, dainty, 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 dainty daisy detail. Dainty daisy detail. Dainty daisy detail. Within, uh, I don't know why I kept thinking of diesel. So, <laughs> <laughs> have yeah. you got a diesel car or a petrol car? No, I was thinking of the wrestler diesel. Oh, yeah. of course you were. So you've got the pinprick details, you've got the swirls. It, it's um, petrol that I've got. Gas, not diesel. <laughs> <laughs> you got gas? Wow! Too much info. <laughs> oh. I share too much sometimes. I've got petrol car. It's a petrol right. car. I've got, just as an FYI, not that I had to clear that up and tell Nicola and Erin <laughs> thought I had gas. Craig doesn't have gas, for the record. Um, Panda Craft has come back, Craig, says, uh, yes, it, but it depends on how the wind is, but if it blows in the correct... <laughs> <laughs> But if it blows in the correct direction, direction you can hear it from the race course. <laughs> and the football stadium. <laughs> it's great in the summer when they have live music on. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That was very well timed. Uh, well timed. Uh, <laughs> Sam says you shouted diesel my dog came in the kitchen. Oh, my dog must be called diesel. Well, I hope it is, or just answers to Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to have abs after this show. Gosh. Oh, gosh, that was so well-timed. All I'm doing there is exactly the same as I've done before. Run that one through, so we've got our two panels then. What we'll, we'll end up doing is kind of, a, well, not kind of, an acetate bow over the front. This is going to neaten our edges. So we can take this one out. So if I remove these here and then here and I'm going to do the same again. So all I need to do is just go in and nick that 
with my scissors there and there. And then I've got my two pieces of the uh, daisies. Just being <laughs> daisies. Daisy daisies. And just popping popping out. There was one pound in the snort jar from the gallery. <laughs> oh, it's not right up until this moment. I've never had any trouble with saying dainty I daisies. We were, I thought we were going down the gas route there again for a second, but no worries. Gilbert says, oh Lord, leave it to Joe and Dre to make a Joe and Craig to make a funny about the wind. Lol, lol. Lol, lol. Lol, lol. Ruffle's my favourite one to say. Ruffle? People put ruffle at the end of the message. Roll on the floor laughing. Oh, uh, right, yeah. Ruffle. I've not heard that for a while, actually. Been a while since I've heard that one, ruffle. So. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I don't know what's happening, Craig. Just keep going, just keep going. So I've added some of my aquapens just onto my glass mat using that as a palette. So I'm going to go in with the peach first and I'm going to go in and I am very, very roughly going to colour in some of the de de the, the daisies. 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 All the way around. So just very, very quickly getting that colour on. You don't need to spend too much time we are wanting that rough sort of look. Going in, picking up the colour. You can do it with a water brush, as I say, or a paintbrush in water, but I think with the card that we're creating with the daisies, it works really well having that little bit of sparkle. So going in. And it doesn't need to be completely coloured uh, with the coverage of colour. You know, if you've got some bits of the daisies that are darker than others, it's absolutely fine. We some darker get... dainty daisies. Yes. And some lighter dainty daisies. That's it, yeah. Brilliant. You can do. It's just getting that colour on. And at first, some, some of them you might think there's not a lot of colour to it, but then when we start to team it with some of the pattern papers, you'll see how well it works. And then I'm going to go in with the spice now, and then what I'm going to do, while it's still relatively wet, I'm going to go in, add some into the scent, I'm going to take some of the excess colour off, and then very, very quickly blend it in. I'm going to go in. I tend to do each one at a time. So we're going in, taking the excess colour off onto my glass mat and then blending that one in again. And I'm doing the same as we carry on all the way down. Very, very repetitive, but it's quite a chilled and relaxed technique to do. You know, I'm going to change your, your play or your flow. It's a very relaxed day, isn't it? I it love a is. Sunday. Forgot how relaxed they can be. Sorry? I forgot how relaxed they can be. Mm, they're really, really good fun. Carrying on with the next one. Blending them out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some of that sparkle coming through. And then I can go into what is the sage, and I'm really going to kind of water that down because I really want a lighter tone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, only into the leaves, only into the leaves, picking that colour up, where we've got the leaves, where we've got the air. And then when it comes to the swirls, we're leaving them white. Squirrels? Yeah, the swirls. Girls, pearls. The swirls are being left white. So then, if we put a bit of black under one that we've not coloured yet, and then we put the one, see how we've picked up. So that green could be darker, but because I really watered it down with my sparkle pen, it's more of a lighter tone. But then we've got that um, real impact at the centre of the daisies using the spice. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on this one. Completely the same, nothing different. What I am just going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to add more, but I want to make sure I put it down onto a dry bit of my glass mat. So let's get that colour on with the peach, the spice, and then some more of the sage. And we'll repeat peach, that process. Peach, spice and sage, it sounds like a recipe, doesn't it? Peach, spice and sage. Yeah, yeah it does, doesn't it? It's got that, yeah, that recipe uh, sound to it. 
Mm. Could be a recipe. You can put it in a recipe. Any questions you've got about edibles, this would be a great chance to get them in. Crafters TV over on Facebook, Crafter Companion over on YouTube. Uh, here is all the details where you can get in touch with us. Uh, you can see them there along the bottom of your screen. You could, if you wanted to, add pearls into the middle mm. instead of going in with the colour of the spice and use pearls instead. So we can go in. I mean, what little girl wouldn't love this really peachy tone, pinky tone, you know, your nice. granddaughter, your niece. We'd love that fiend. And then if you want to colour in the swirls, that's up to you. I'm keeping them white, of course. But that's the option that you've got. Now let's go in. So pulling that colour in to the middle, taking in the excess. We're going to go in. You know, you don't want to go too much because what you're going to end up doing is kind of like murdering the cardstock underneath. <laughs> so what will happen is you'll get really that fibrous effect. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. So you want to get that colour down, blend it out, pick it up, dab off the excess, blend it out again, and then take... Would you leave this on the radiator to dry, or would you just let it dry, you know, just leave it? Or could you, add, could you force dry it? You could. Uh, you force dry anything, what will happen is your cardstock will naturally want to curve. Oh, so you wouldn't quite put it on a the bit. radiator? Um, if you did do, if you do it on a radiator or a heat tool and it did curl up, all that you would just do is flatten it down. Brilliant. But uh, for something like this, it's not going to take long. We're going to use this as it is to finish our card. But, you know, you can do if you want to heat set it. If you want to heat set it, you can. So let's take that. So back in with the sage here, picking out these leaves. Really, really lightly with the colour here. Have you got a burglar alarm at your house, Craig? I don't have an actual burglar alarm. I do have one of those blink camera systems, but you not do. an actual burglar alarm. We got one of those. You know the, the the doorbell that has the um, the doorbell that has a camera on yeah. it. Yes, you know. And all it meant was that my housemate would just question what time I came home all the time. She'd be like, "Do you know you didn't get until three twenty-four this morning?" Yeah, that's the I'll thing. I'll keep it yeah. up. And she was like, "Should see you stay if you're trying to come down the driveway. Look at this." This thing on. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't good fun. I found them quite judgmental. Yeah, my, mine's just like the similar stuff. It's not the doorbell, it's just the cameras. Right. And I've got them dotted about the, the outside of my house. So, uh, my house is my house. I've only got the one house. Sorry? So, <laughs> I've only got the one house. Just to clarify, just to clarify, I've only got the one house. Not my house is. Um, but yeah, there's some sometimes that you know, you can see something catches it, whether it's an animal or something like that. You can see what time it was and. Or just watch them. What sort of uh, wonderful animals do you get in spending more on your CCTV? Nothing uh, too... Flamingos? Too fancy. Hippopotamuses? No, nothing like that. It is just a cat or a dog. About a tarantula? No, not tarantula. Nope. Not tarantula at all. No. I don't... Uh, the thing is, when, certainly with the animals that are around you, I don't feel vulnerable in any way. Not at all. No Fabulous. problem. Um, Gianna says, you two should have your own comedy show. It would be a hoot. Can you imagine? Could you imagine? What sort of comedy would it be? I don't know. It would be... Um, we'd be roommates. Right, a roommate comedy sort of situation. Let's start writing it. You need to. Maybe we could turn it into a two-man show and take it to Edinburgh. Um, Pandacraft says there is no there's just one problem when you sit in the garden when it's nice weather you can smell everyone's food cooking not just neighbours but the local restaurants too I'm getting quite peckish I'm always quite peckish to be honest uh, it's, it's that wind isn't it carrying the, the smell of the food in mm -hmm. the air that wind um, Squirtle according to Craig love that Scottish accent 
Squirtle. Squirtle. Don't know what a squirtle is. Don't know what a squirtle is either. No. Uh, Ellen says, hi, Craig and Joe and everyone at CTV. Also, all my hi. crafty friends. Hi, Eleanor Schwing Jones. So the in case everyone's just wondering what the measurement is, Joe, just before I forget to tell everyone, my cardstock is six and a half by six and a quarter. Perfect. And what I've done is I've scored at an inch, and then to make it easier on myself, I just turned it around, scored at an inch again, and my piece of acetate is five and a half by six and a quarter. And then that just means that what I can do is if I tuck that into the fold of the card, we can then take that. Fold that one in, and then what we've got is we've got our little bow from our acetate that we've got there. We've got the one. I can imagine with you working here, Joe, you would have a purple burglar alarm. Yeah, I would, absolutely. Yeah. That linked up to my Irish wristwatch. Wrist <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> my Irish wristwatch. Your Irish wristwatch. Yeah, Irish wrist. <laughs> they said apparently in the game, it's a moment ago, the two, two of the hardest things to say are purple burglar alarm, don't struggle with that, and Irish, Irish, Irish wrist, <laughs> Irish wrist watch. <laughs> Irish wrist watch. Irish wrist watch. <laughs> Irish wrist watch. <laughs> <laughs> Irish wrist, I can't do it. Can you do it? I, Irish, Irish, <laughs> Irish wristwatch. Yeah, but say it like without. Irish wristwatch. <laughs> Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. I can't do it. No. Irish, what am I trying to say again? I Irish wristwatch. Irish, Irish wristwatch. Wrist Irish whisper, no. Irish wristwatch. We're gonna, this is the next Irish hour around 33 minutes of the show now. I mean, you stood here trying to say this. Irish if you can say it at home, let me know. I bet no one can. I once sold a crafting product, Craig, called Cut, Tuck and oh, Fold. Uh, yeah, I remember that product. Cut, Tuck and Fold, yeah. Very, very, very difficult show that was. I can imagine. I remember back elsewhere watching uh, you when you had those shows. Which one, sorry? When you had those shows. You remember, yeah? Yeah. Cut, tuck and fold. Yeah. Oh, awful. Yep, I remember then. So going in, and all that I've done now is added my two die-cut banners to the side but we can finish this one off. We're gonna go in with a couple of strips of pattern paper, same one that I've used on the inside here. And then what I'm gonna do is if I add that one into there and then there. Now, of course, because this is very dimensional and it was intended to be with it being a masterclass, you would make a box for it. Um, but uh, that's obviously what you could do if you're going to replicate the style do a box for it to go in. But I'm going in, I've just stamped out one of my send and love your way sentiments. I'm going to go in, I'm going to have that towards the top. Now, of course, with your stamps, you can do that before you do the wrap of your acetate. But I'm going to go in, finish off with a bow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pokey tool, a little helping aid. I'm going to sit that, and then I'm going to press on my acetate just to secure it. And then there we go, we've gone, created. Now, I have attached each of the edges, but I've not attached my die cuts. I like them to be quite free flowing. So you can see we've got our acetate dome you've got there on top of a card blank. You know, it could be something really fancy if you wanted it to, but then there we go, that's just one of them. And then actually, fact, you can do that with any of the timeless border dies, but just love that dainty, dainty daisies. Dainty daisies. Panda Christ, I don't even know what you're on about. What's an Irish wristwatch? Uh, well, it's very difficult to say. Uh, Rhonda says, that's it, they've gone now. Um, Lenny can say it easily, apparently. Oh, no, nice show off, Lenny. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gilmore says, love this daisy edgeable. Yeah, let me take you back through the different designs that you're gonna get included, included in here. Uh, edgeable's so great, because there's so many concepts you can do with them. So you've got this one here, it's your rose garden. 
you will get the foliage. This would be a great one, actually, I think, to maybe snip away from the edge of the die, Craig, you know, just to use along a border as is, just as a sort of a topper style die. Yeah. You've then got this one here, which is your butterflies. You've got the dragonflies. This is those delicate daisies, or ditzy daisies, is actually what they're called, uh, and wild flowers. I love that they're not even called delicate daisies. We've been calling them, oh. they're called ditzy daisies. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, 38.35 or 47.75 is your price there on those. Right, double-sided edgeables. These are brilliant. 80% of these have gone. Just have a look at the saving. Not hard to see why. You said £55 or $62 when you get a hold of these. It's a 70% saving for you, which is absolutely, well, it's blooming marvellous, really, isn't it? Each one of these is £12.99 or £14.99. So you're paying for two. We send you six. Amazing. You've got this one, your dancing butterflies. Tazenderschmetterlings on there. This is your shining stars. You've also got your fleur de lis, which I love. This one is your pretty florals. This is one of my all time favorite dyes, Craig. I'm glad. I absolutely adore this dye. It's the lily border. So, so beautiful. I'm glad you and, said that. Sorry? I'm glad you said Why? that. Are you doing that one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and you've also got your joyful hearts. Your Freudig Herzen, uh, which is that one just there. We also have for you, as well, the double-sided plate bundle. Get the junior and the regular size together, which is brilliant, because you're saving uh, $11.98 or $14.90, which is a 35% saving, which is roughly about the cost of the junior plates, I believe. So um, really brilliant to get those together as a bundle. So definitely uh, grab those. We do have them individually if you don't own the original Gemini. If you own the original Gemini, because these are great because they'll go sideways through your Gemini machine, uh, which is brilliant. The other one I want to tell you about is the Modern Edgeables, uh, which is this one just here. And then here you're going to get the Japanese Anemone. This one's your Romantic Rose, which I love. Spring Tulips, love that one. Really love that one. Uh, then you've got cascading butterflies. Some really nice big butterflies in there. This one here is your, um, oh, look at that, woodland fairy. What a whopper of a fairy that one is. That's amazing. Super. And you've got the bonnie bow. Nice these, because they're big, substantial edibles, aren't they? Bigger. Really nice. Yeah. Uh, this one here, 44.95 or 58.25, if you want to get your hands on all of those. Uh, Maggi Mundi Farina says hello all on this beautiful Sunday. I think I need to repeat my message. I lost, I lost. So I love watching Craig and Joe trying to keep their composure during the show. It reminds me of my sister and I in church. We could not even look at each other. Try keeping composure in church with your mum giving you the look. Well, you guys are great. Love these dyes. Yeah, me and Becky S are a bit like that. Yeah, when yeah, we were sat yeah. on the sofa together, the person in the middle is talking. We're not allowed to look mm. at each other because we go, we yeah, do. Yeah, I've been that person in the middle a few times. Yeah, have you? You have, yeah. <laughs> uh, Panda Cross says, I can't say it, and I only just poured the gin. Oh, lovely, an afternoon gin. Hello. Erin uh, has ordered her elderflower tonic, so she's going to experience the delights of the uh, elderflower gin and tonic very shortly. Patty says, I'm happy my virtual card making event starts an hour later this morning, so I don't miss these two. Never a dull, no dull moment with the dynamic duo. Awesome. We're many things. Dynamic, I'm not so sure. We'll take that. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll take that. Right, what would you like to show us next then, Craig? Right, let's have a look at these ones, the modern edgeables. We're going to use the bow, and we're actually going to do uh, some paper piecing within this one here. So what I've done is I've got my card blank. Now, I did make this card blank size myself because it is six, uh, well, it was six and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then what I've done is I've trimmed in, so my front layer is three inches. So I've cut three and a quarter away. So this has given me my start of my card blank. And then what I'm going to do with the bow edgeable, I'm going to pop that one on into place. And similar to before, what I'm doing is I'm making sure it's right up against the edge of my card blank and getting it as straight as I can. And these are really fun to do the paper piece in, hence why I'm doing that. So let's just line could up. Could you use the hold and release sheets if you need to with these, Craig? You could do, yeah. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. No reason at all. If you want to use them, go for it. I um, 
I'm using my junior. This should just fit in no more. Just fit in no more. So let's try that one through. So let's go. And we're going to go. Oh, no. We're going to have to nip to our large Gemini. Oh, no problem at all. No problem at all. No problem at all. Do you know what? The gnomes are still exceptionally busy over on the website. Um, since we launched them on... Thursday, I believe it was. Yes, Thursday we launched them. They've been incredibly busy. Uh, v says, love the ribbon one. Uh, yeah, it's cute, isn't it? It's it is really cute, isn't it? It's a really cute one. Still just using my junior plates. I'm just turning them on, on themselves there. But yes, they, uh, the, the gnomes are really cute. Really cute, really popular. And actually, you could start to use some of your edibles with these ones. Oh, you yeah. You do that. Here we go. So now that I've got that one cut, so let's take this one out. So removing it out of the way. If I fold that one back, we've... <laughs> They've been on the gin already in the gallery. I think they have. Are you? I think they have. Now they're blaming it on the gnomes. Yeah. The, the gnomes, gnomes were why we, what we had in the system on Thursday. That's why we had some issues. It can't be a coincidence the day we launched the gnomes. Too much fun me. on Sunday, too Deary much fun. Me. So there we go, we've got our bow that's been cut on the edge of our card. Now, keeping in mind that could be further along if that was the full card front. But what I want to do is I want to have bits to paper piece. So I've gone in with a piece of our pastel green Centura Peril. So I'll just pop it through my large Gemini scene. I've got that plugged in again. And then I'm not going to take the plates apart just yet because I want to make sure that I don't lose the bits that come out, because that's, of course, what would technically be the waste, but I want to keep them. So what I'm going to do to start with is let's go in with my background. So I'm going to go in. I'm just going to mat and layer this one onto the back. The reason I'm doing that is it gives me that extra bit of um, colour at the back for me to then layer it on top of. I know that made no sense. I know what I was trying to say, but I, I'll explain that in a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that one in first. So let's get that laid into the middle. Press that one in. And then what I'm going to do, so go in with my acetate here. So I'm going to tuck it right to the edge of my card. So we'll see that just coming in in a moment. Love that. There we go. So I've got that tucked right into the edge of the corner here. But what I want to do is I want to then place my adhesive onto the side. So what I'm going to do is, even though I'm using acetate, I am going to use my tacky glue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. I'm going to go into these bigger bits first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into these smaller little bits. Just sketch over the back with my tacky glue. And... For something like this, when the, or if the glue seeps underneath and onto the acetate, it doesn't matter because we're going to end up covering it anyway with the paper piece in. So don't worry about that. So I'm going to tuck that back in and I'm going to press that one in. And then at, this was the point where when I come and do my paper piecing in a moment, because I've got this pattern paper at the back, it makes it easier for me to start paper piecing into place, whereas if that was just white against that white background, it can make it a little bit more trickier. We've got an adhesive selection coming up in Second Chance Sunday. We and do, it don't we? red liner, all-purpose, tacky, 3D glue gel, two different sizes of foam pads, two sizes of red liner tape, and also low-tack tape. I'm going to give you the details for that in just a second. Really good collection, really good. So what I'm wanting is I'm wanting all of these bits. There it is. So pop them ones out there, there, there. So I'm using the release holes. Pop these bits out, nothing else in place. Now you can cherry pick with colour if you want to. So the actual loop of the bow, you might want to be a pink. You maybe want the streamers of the bow to be uh, a green. That's up to you. But what I'm going to do is I am just going to use my tacky glue with a fine applicator. So if I go in, 
and kind of colouring in the middle. We don't need to coat the whole of the acetate, but what I can do is I can go in and then paper piece that back into place. And that acetate has given us a base for us to do that onto. And then we'll go into each section. We'll go in with our tacky glue once again. Fill that Craig's in. Craig's fussy gluing is almost as great as his fussy cutting. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. What's fussy gluing? Fussy gluing? Yeah. Did I say fussy gluing? Don't know, that's what they're saying. Oh, oh right. Craig's fussy gluing is all as great as his fussy cutting. Ah, oh, right, yeah, so uh, oh, onto, onto the back. Whereas I don't go onto each in, like each individual piece, what I'll do is I'll fussy. Sort of sketch over all it. All the top, yeah, sketch over it. So doing exactly the same with all the bits, because I'm going to do all of it pastel green. So filling in, and then we can go in, paper piece them back in, pop them into place, find each one that goes in, match it up, press it in to secure it. And it works an absolute treat. So it's a therapeutic thing to do. Just make sure they're all the right way. At least with it being on acetate, because it takes a wee bit longer to dry, it means you've got more time to get it into place, get it into the right place. I want to go in with this one. Press that one in. So if I press that up, now I'm going to do the same. Work our way around the streams of the bow. Painting or colouring in. Work our way down. What you could even do is if you've done another layer this size, cut it out again in white, and then instead of going in with paper piecing, go in with your alcohol pens like we done yesterday with our stained glass effect dies. Do that. And then we can... Oh, I think that stained glass sold out for me today, Craig. That was a good, it was a good collection. It was at a good price. So I'm not surprised if it did. Do you know what I've never understood, Craig? What's that? The summer sorbet paper pad is only recommended for ages 14 and above. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I'm not sure why. I don't know. It says ages 14 plus. Mm -hmm. It's very, very weird. Do you not think? That is a bit of a strange one, And isn't also, it? The a all the paper pads say only f uh, suitable for ages 14 plus. Yeah. That is a bit of a strange one, isn't really it? Really strange. Very strange. I'm going to have to... I'm obviously, obviously going to have to speak to Leanne and get an understanding of why that is. Thank you. Why? I mean... If they're going to eat if under 14 or going to eat paper, I mean, there's a lot of other things around them that are much more dangerous on a daily basis, I'm sure, than paper, but I don't know. I don't have children. Can you imagine me having children? Absolutely not. No. You love your holidays too I can too imagine much. You, you having one. Hey, you'd be quite you good. A lot of people you, say you that. Know, I think you're a bit more of a homebody than I am. Yeah. I'm never at home. Where's the difference with my brother? Because he's not... Not a home buddy. Or he's, n he's not kid-orientated. Paternal, no. Yeah. No, not at all. Completely different. Um, yes, Nicola, he is still, still at home just now. But, yeah, he's not kids. Not kid-orientated. No. Uh, Patty says, there's a very detailed frame die in my event and a lot of people were posting saying they could get it cut out very well. Of course, the Gemini cut it like butter. Those with Geminis were posting they weren't having any issues. The power of the Geminis, like no other. Absolutely, it's not. Power of the Gemini, of course. That's it. We do say it, and it's true. You know, it is the power of the Gemini. If you've ever had any dyes, or you know anyone that's got dyes that are tricky to cut, well, then... And if um, you don't have one and you need one, Craig, you can get the junior right can now. You can, indeed. £100, £100 worth of freebies. Oh, yeah. You can, indeed. My, uh, my personal favourite. My personal favourite. So what I'm going to do, in actual fact, I'm going to see if I can lift that one off. 
There we go. So I'm taking that one off. Close that. I'm going to pop that onto the front. Just here. So pressing that into place. And then let's go. I'm just grabbing some pearls from the side. Let's go. These are lovely pearls. Let's go. Where are these pearls from? Um, not here. No, they, these are the ones that um, Bibby has. Ah, I'm still, well, talking of still the twisting are we around allowed to, to get them here. So, talking of the Bibster, are we allowed to start talking about next week? Well, she's in uh, tomorrow, is it, or is it Tuesday? Tuesday and Wednesday. It's a double dawn Bibby extravaganza, isn't it? Are you in Tuesday, Wednesday, Craig? I'm not. I'm at Hobby no. Maker here in the UK. You're at home. I'm at Hobby Maker. Oh, at Hobby Maker. Sorry, I've yeah. said home. No. Oh, well, Hobby that's maker. a shame. You're not going to get to catch up. Um. Um. Yeah. No. I'm. I won't be here, so I won't see her. I think she's bringing someone else with her. A lovely, talented lady ah. that works with her, I believe. Oh. To be honest, I've not spoken to Dawn in a couple of weeks, because I know she's been really busy with the same here. But these are hers. These are the ones when I said to you in the past how... Oh, it'll be Sharon that'll be with us Sharon, from yeah. uh, Dawn... Dawn Bibby Creations. Dawn Bibby Creations. Right? Yeah, Dawn Bibby Creations. It's going to be the lovely Sharon joining us, but with some glorious, glorious Dawn Bibby items. So that'll be lovely. She's an incredible crafter as well. Sorry? Sharon. She's an incredible crafter as well, Fabulous. Sharon. You'll love what she makes. But there we go, Joe. Add in some pearls. And then I'm going to lift that one up. So I've got my sentiment in the middle, but when I open it up, what I've got, a little panel there, but the sentiment just sits nicely into place. A couple of uh, white or ivory pearls to finish it off. You could add uh, an additional sentiment, more ink in if you want to change the colours of the paper piece in, but I like that pastel tones that we've got within that. And that's just from our pastel range of Centura Pearl. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Another glorious make there from Craig. Let me take you back through these then. I'll just give you the details again for these edibles. You've got the Japanese anemone, which is that one just there. Uh, really gorgeous. We've got the romantic rose. You've also got the spring tulips. This is a cascading butterflies. You'll also get the Woodland Fairy and, of course, the Bonnie Bow. 44.95 or 58.25. One of the most recent additions, I think, those, aren't they, uh, to yeah. our Edge of Balls, which is fantastic. We're going to recommend this paper. I'm going to, um, sorry, share with you the paper. I love the summer sorbet. Uh, only six opportunities left to get this. You get 48 sheets. Uh, don't, even tr don't even think about it if you're not 14. <laughs> <laughs> I love we it. Well, ask for this, your age. This is like this one here reminds me of those. I've seen a lot of Volkswagen cars in this colour, Craig. You have that colour just there. Yeah, I don't know why. Like a lovely lime green. Look at that. Gorgianius, isn't it? The orange is just beautiful too. That peach. It's all about my beach. You can see that's gorgeous. Uh, and you. It's all about the beach. Uh, it's that one just there. <laughs> I forget where I am sometimes, you know. I really do. Don't we all? We've also got the Paisley Pearl available for you. Really gorgeous. Really thick, this one as well. 300 GSM. Look at that. That's a hot print. It's fuchsia. The fuchsia's bright. The fuchsia's fabulous. Uh, this one here. Can you go back to that one? The fuchsia. What? Oh, back to the fuchsia. Hey! You We're fell today, for it. aren't we? Absolutely. You know, that lovely sort of... Must, very slightly mustardy yellow. This one, I'm going to call this turquoise. It looks very blue on your screen. It's actually a little bit greener in person. But this Not midnight is green. fabulous. Look at that. Just amazing. Really, really gorgeous pad, that one. The Paisley Pearl. We launched that over a birthday, I believe, with the... Um, 
with a USB, which is brilliant. Uh, the next one, the Gnomes here, um, and this one's fabulous. This is 250 GSM. So this is from our Christmas Gnome, but it'll work with either of the selections. They are really gorgeous, that red and green. Absolute classic Christmas colours. Not going to be long till we're crafting Christmas. I would imagine it won't be long until we're seeing a lot of Christmas coming around, Craig, actually. And oh, it's going to be uh, coming around quick. Uh, then we also have this one, which is your be beautiful. You're going to have to be quick because there's only four left. Got that wonderful ivory, that beautiful warm yellow, glorious green, that lovely chocolate. That is like a really deep chocolate brown. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, and then you've got this wonderful midnight in the here as well again, which is like a, it's kind of it's almost black, isn't it? But just not quite. Really, really lovely. And uh, we also got the caring thoughts in a six by six for you as well, and it is your pattern paper uh, in a six by six. There, as you can see, absolutely, really lovely, uplifting floor. Very pretty paper pad that one just there. Five ninety nine or nine ninety five. I also want to share with you this, been super popular all weekend. We launched it during the Sarah Cartload. Um, and you get in here, it's an 80 sheet collection. Love this because you get different styles. So you're getting 20 sheets of the papers, all double sided, firstly in the gold, then in the card, then 20 sheets in the silver paper, and then 20 sheets in the silver card, all double sided, all gloriously shiny. Just look how shiny that is. Oh, shiny. Love that. Don't forget about the spend more, save more. You can save 10 when you spend 50. You can save 20 when you spend 100. You save 30 when you spend 150. Oh, nailed it. Uh, and the details here on the side. You will need the in each individual codes for the individual offers, but you can use the codes as often as you like, but you must uh, use them before midnight tonight, which is very, very important. Why don't we give you an opportunity to check out those baskets? Whilst you do that, here's all the details of US delivery, take a look. We've had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular six to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Quick buy, all your crafty must haves in a flash. Put away your tape measure and fabric scissors. The Threaders Fabric Cutter offers accuracy and precision with every cut. This handy tool slices through fabric in a guillotine style. Its ergonomic design features a comfortable and protective handle, so it's safe and easy to use whether you're right or left-handed. Its 45mm rotary blade will cut up to six layers of fabric at a time, so your sewing, quilting, and upholstery project times are cut down to size. It's equipped with a measuring guide in metric and imperial for a perfectly accurate cut every time. The built-in grid ruler has 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree angle lines, so you can cut fabric on any angle, including the bias. Quick buy, all your crafty must-haves in a flash. Flash, ah, oh, yes, get your quick picks uh, now whilst they are there. We're gonna move on and we're gonna have a quick look at Build a Border. These are brilliant because what you've got are the dies and then you're able to configure them in all these different ways. So you get so many different ways of using them across the four die sets. You can use them as edibles, you can stack them up if you want to. There's loads of different ways of putting these together. They're a very, very clever set of dies. They're 4077 or 5268 to get all four of those, which is great. That saves you almost 30 pounds or just over $35, which is lovely. 
The other thing we're going to have a little look at is going to go back to those double-sided edge balls. I love these. Really, really. I think these were launched around the same time I started Quake. I think it was one of the first launches I ever did uh, when I came here yeah. to Crafts TV. Which is a while ago now. Getting on for two and a half years ago. Has it really? Has it flown by? Wow. Absolutely flown by. So this one here, this is your Dancing Butterflies, your Tazenda Schmetterling. Then you've got your Shining Stars. It's your Fleur de Lis. Mm, pretty florals. My absolute favourite is this one, the favourite. My absolute favourite. It, what's your favourite? Ooh. Uh, is this one. It's the Lily Border. And then you've also got in here the Joyful Hearts too. Uh, 2338 or 2668. Saving you almost £55, just over $62. The other thing to note as well, if you do need to go for the plates, we do have the plates available for you as well. Uh, I'll put details for those on the bottom of the screen for you. You get the large one and you get the junior size as well. Double-sided dies, Craig, still one of those things a little bit, some people are a little bit apprehensive about maybe. I would say use this as an opportunity to get these because look at the saving. That's going to more than cover the cost of the double-sided plates, isn't it? So Absolutely. go for the plates and the double-sided edgeables. You know you've got something you can do loads of concepts with, but there's no need to be scared of them, is there? Ah! Ah, edibles. No, don't be scared of them at all. You know, because what you're doing is essentially you're die counting two layers at once. So you do need the double sided plates, whether it's the A4 ones or, of course, the A5 one, depending on what machine that you're using. And what we're going to do is we're going to dive straight into it. So I'm using my chocolate centura pearl. So it's cut down to 11 and a quarter by six inches. And then what we're going to do is, within your double-sided die, it's exactly as it says, there's a die-cut edge on each side. So one of them's got more detail, one of them's got less detail. That's going to enable you to do a matting and layer straight over the top of it. So when it comes to my brown layer, what I want is I want to have this side here that's a little bit less detail. And then what I am also going to want to do is, if I then pop it at the base of my card blank. So I'm going to bring it to the bottom and then I'm going to secure it with my low tack tape. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I don't put my tape over any of the die cut lines. So I'm just going to hold it into place. So what we need to do when we're die cutting in is a different uh, pl plate configuration. So it changes slightly. It's your base cutting plate and then it is your first cutting plate, double-sided plate, so it's your green one that Joe was showing you. And then we're going to pop our die down, so that means then this side of the die, underneath here, that's then going to cut into this green plate. And then on this side, what I'm wanting is I want this to be cut in our turquoise. Now, I'm not overly concerned about where about this cuts, because I'm going to end up trimming it down afterwards, but all that I'm going to do is lay my cardstock over the top. And once again, I am going to secure it so that it doesn't move. So I'm going to line it straight up at the top, pop my tape on there and then there. And now that layer needs something to cut into. So we're going to bring in our second plate and then we're going to bring in our top cutting plate. So whether you're doing the A4 or the A5, you need your two double-sided plates, but you get the two of them in each set. So for these ones, certainly when it comes to the double-sided die, I do tend to pause it and then reverse it just to give it that extra double cut. But then that is where what it does is it cuts that top layer and it cuts that back layer at the same time. So we can remove all these ones out of the way. Not quite sure why there's a lot of talk of reclining chairs on YouTube at the moment. Reclining chairs? Yeah. I used to have a massage reclining chair when I lived in Peterborough. Did you? It sort of vibrated and it heated as well. Oh, wow. Vibrated, heated and electric reclined. Yeah. That would have been comfy. Very comfy. Yeah, you get big fancy reclining, heating. Well, right I say leather. Chairs. It was it was pleather, really. Was it? Yeah. Okay. But still comfy though. Really super comfy. Really super comfy. One of those ones with quite high arms, so you know you get to slip into it. One of those ones. Yeah. Was it like one of the lazy boys? No, it was a sort of a. a, a um, it was a, a Billy No brand. Was it? Mm. But it was uh, along in that vein. 
Gosh, I need this... to get a chair for my apartment, Craig, a small armchair. Quite a fancy one of those sort of like Scandinavian sort of G-plan style armchairs. Yeah. They are so much money. Really? Chairs are so much money, armchairs, yeah. I mean, even just like a wooden chair, you know, like a really nice one. You're looking mm -hmm. at like, you can spend easily upwards of 400 pounds on a chair. They oh, are just smart. one of those things that are just disproportionately expensive. I don't understand why. Yeah. Like light fittings are another thing. Yeah. It's like, why yeah. are they so expensive? Why? And why are they so hard to install? Yeah. Um, I don't get it. They are. They can. They can what be really expensive. What other things are disproportionately expensive? Razor blades for men. Yeah. So expensive. Why are they so expensive? I don't know. Why are they? Can you think of anything else that's disproportionately expensive? Uh. Not off the top of my yeah. head. Let me know in the comments. Petrol. It's a real whinging Sunday, isn't it? Sorry? Petrol. <laughs> Petrol, yeah, I mean, I get that. It's very expensive. It has come down a little bit, hasn't it, though, in the UK? Diesel hasn't. No, diesel's still very high. I've got to go and fill up right after this show, actually. Um, you've reminded me, so thank you for that. But yeah, I do feel like most of my disposable income goes into my car at the moment through the through the petrol hole. Yeah, I think a lot of us are like that. Yeah, feel exactly. Is it the called same. a petrol hole? Is what what we call it? Um, I just said the tank. Petrol cap, maybe. Petrol cap, not petrol hole. Yeah, I just call it the tank. So the cap is the bit that comes off. So where does the nozzle go into? The tank. So it goes into my petrol tank. So it goes through the, the petrol hole, hole in the tank. tank. So it goes, does go through the petrol hole. It's like a really bad remake of Through the Keyhole. Join me, <laughs> Joe Remus, as we go through, through the, the hole. petrol hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I better explain what I'm just doing there, you know. Uh, so, what, so what I've got is I've now got the base of my car blank that's got one layer of my die cut. cut. And then with this one, when it comes to the detail, because there is a lot more detail being cut away, let's trim, take away those excess, what will happen is that will overlay right over the top. So see how we've got the shadow. So for me, something like this sort of substantial size card, this is the way I like to do it, because what I'm then away to do is I'm just going to come along and then I'm going to trim all the way around. What will happen is you get that sort of embossed line all the way around. So what we're going to do is, I'm just using my scissors for this and I can cut down. And then for this bit, it doesn't need to be overly neat because I'm going to end up covering it up with a banner. But what we can do is cut that all the way around and then that can shadow over the top so then we've got that shadow coming through so what i can do with this one joe is using my tacky glue or of course you can be using your dotty tape i'm going to go in into the back of the detailed die cuts with my tacky glue sketching quickly over the top so that i don't need to do every single bit but then we can attach that one on before we cut our next one amazing um crafty stacy lou says um, it cost her £75 in diesel to fill up a 1.5 litre Nissan Micro. I was so depressed. Yeah, I think mine's about, mine's about that sort of cost now. Um, who else have we got here? It cost me 35 to fill from a tank to full. Normally cost me 15 bucks. Well, 35 bucks for a full tank. Gosh, that's about, what, £28 here in the UK. So I guess fuel's about a third of the price in the US. Must be. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, hello everyone, I am talk taking an hour out of my busy schedule to watch the rest of this show. Well, thank Yay. you very much, Karen Fisher. Uh, Alicia Gordon says, good morning from Arkansas. Good morning. Love it. I have a question. I have double-sided dies and plates. Do I have to use the metal shim, please? No. No. That'll, that will cut without your metal shim. There's no, uh, there's no reason for you to pop it into place. It will cut just fine. So no, don't worry about that one. Two cutting plates, two double-sided plates. That's all that you need. Brilliant. Hope that helps. Hopefully. Any other questions, just ask Joe. Who will ask me? Who will ask Craig? And yet, blue, blue and brown is not a normal colour combo, but actually really, really works, isn't it? It does Reminds really. me of the Madonna album cover. What one was it? Does anyone know? Oh, I don't know. Never been... Um, a listener of it's uh, not Madonna. Confessions, is it? No. So now that I've done that one there, Joe, 
But I'm then going away to do it, so let's bring in another piece of the two same colours. So both of these were six and a quarter by four inches. And what I'm really going to do is exactly the same as before. So let's take our plates again, and then our brown layer. What I can do is pop that one up to the top of my card. We can tape it to secure it. So let's go in to there and then to there, and then take our turquoise to there, to there, and then we're going to run that one through, and then we can start to assemble this layer now. So it's going to be quite a substantial card with quite uh, a couple of cuts from the double-sided border die. It's going to look quite smart, certainly with the colour combination. It really is very, very busy across lots of things you've seen in this show. I think the reason these Edgeball Masterclasses are so great, Craig, is they are quite universal, aren't they? Like, if you can do it with one Edgeable, you can do it with pretty much all of them, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. So for this one, you could take any of the double-sided die Edgeables. We've got, in actual fact, you could do this with a few of the non-double-sided Edgeable dies. Have a play, see what you can come up with. So, yeah, that's that's a good thing, you know. With many of the things that we do as well, you, for instance, prime examples, craft along. You might not always have the exact collection that we're using, or you might not exactly have the same paper pad that we're using. So you'll change it up to the style that you want or the products that you've got, and it'll look different, but you're still able to follow along and create what we're creating. So yeah, Brilliant. that's what's good with the master classes. Fantabulous. So let's take these bits. Only thing you can't do with the double-sided, well, two things you can't do. You can't foil with them because you've got that die on each side. And to clean them out, please don't do what I do, and that's tap them off the edge of your desk, because of course what you're going to do is you're going to damage one side of them. So if you need to take the bits out, use your pokey tool, pop them out. I'll do the rest later on, but that's all that I would do with my pokey tool. And then we're going to pop these bits out. We're going to layer this one up, and then we can go in to assembling the full card. Sounds amazing. It was the Immaculate Out, Immaculate Collection. That is the one I was thinking, Katie. Madonna's Immaculate Album. Yeah, she's she's. I'm not a, I'm not a huge Madonna no. stan. Are you, Craig? No, she's no. not really on my radar. I don't I don't have like my playlist or over the years I've not had any of her albums or her songs or anything like that. Yeah, no. There's so many big amazing gigs happening this year, Craig. Yes, sir. Like the Rolling Stones are playing Hyde Park, uh, Adele is playing Hyde Park, Paul McCartney is on tour. Madonna's not touring though. Celine was meant to be on tour. She was meant to be on tour. Harry Styles is on tour. Is this, is this, you think probably as well because this is the first year with like no restrictions here I in the UK? I think it's the first one where we've been in no doubt whatsoever that there's going to be any restrictions, isn't yeah. it, for a, for a couple of years now. So last year was sort of, there was not much planning going on, was there, no. let's say. So yeah, so every... Too every much uncertainty. Uncertainty, indeed. absolutely. So yeah, this year being guaranteed. The date's happening. So it's, it's, it's good, isn't it? It's good for everyone to be able to get out, but then it's good for the, the music industry as well, get back out there. Absolutely is. But all that I'm doing is the same as before. I'm going round the edges, sketching with my tacky glue onto the middle. All of these die cut bits really quickly. Working our way in. And then in. Work our way round. There's little bits, for instance, these circles. What you could do is you could keep a hold of them and they would be good for, for gems or perils. But we can then overlap, overlap that one back in. So the brown and the turquoise does work really, really well. So get that into place to get it in, lined up into position, and then we can then chop off the edges to neaten it up. So there's that one. Let's press that one in. And then we can go back. So what I'm going to do with this one here is we've got our base layer. Now, I want to stabilise the bottom. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with some acetate. And this is construction acetate. So I'm going to pop a strip along here. 
And I'm also going to pop a strip along here. And I'll pop one a little bit further up because it's, it's a square of acetate that I've got. So if I take them off, so add in these. You know what these double-sided dies would be good for as well is if you pop them, once they're die cut, onto a piece of cardstock that's got your self-adhesive sheets and go yeah. through with your uh, gildan flakes. Nice, love that idea. That would look really quite smart. Really, really quite smart. So I'm going to do it to line it up in the perfect position. I'm going to press that into the centre. So I've now got a stable base along the bottom, although you can't see it, but we've got our acetate there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along, let's bring in my guillotine. I want to just trim off that edge, just to neaten it up slightly. And then that is going to go quite high up. So there is the end of my card blank. But what we can do is I'm Erin, going to come to the top. Erin seems to think that this was quite a popular bridesmaid's dress colour combo. Really? Back in the, what, uh, in the noughties? A lot of chocolate bridesmaid's dresses with blue accessories. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I can. Maybe it's a US thing. Maybe. It's much better on a card than a person, apparently. Yeah, I can't, can't say I would, uh, I could imagine it on a, uh, on a bridesmaid or that. Sure, it looks it's pretty. Good, it's a good masculine colour theme, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely it is. That is for sure. So you could do that. But popping my tape along the back there, and where you've got that embossed line from that die edge, what I'm going to do is I'm just lining that up against the top of the card fold. And then I've gone in with a piece of white card, white multi-purpose, which is six by three and a half. And then I'm going to do my mats and layers coming down a quarter of an inch before we finish Ooh, it off. So we've gone that. from a six by six card to making it a really tall, elongated card. I'm just going to use my tape to mat and layer them together and wrap a little bit of ribbon. Susan Rushton says, good morning to the Dynamic Duo CTV crew and to all of you crafty peeps. I think Susan's over on the West Coast. What time is it on the west coast? It's, uh, seven, it's only quarter past seven. It, uh, quarter past seven? Yes. It blows my mind that there's eight hours between us and the west coast of the US. I mean, we've had the time difference conversation a few times, haven't we? But it does blow my mind it is, yeah, how it works. When you so think I've never about fully it. quite understood it. When you really think about it, it's, it's the one where you fly to. You fly from Australia or New Zealand to the west coast of the US and you arrive. It's a 12 hour flight and you arrive there four hours before you left. That is bonkers. That is bonkers. That's not weird, that's just bonkers. Absolute bonkers. That's crazy. I mean, arriving before you've left. Yeah, that was the same with Concord, apparently. You'd get there before you left to New York, because it was like three and a bit hours to New York with a five hour time difference. Yeah. Or four hours with a five hour time difference. Madness. Sure, I'm not one for on Concord would definitely have been something I would have loved to have done. Would I like to, to experience it? But as you know, we've talked about it before here. I am one of those that love the airport experience, love flying on the plane. Mm. So I wouldn't want it to be over too too quick. Yeah, but just to say you've flown Concord, can you imagine? Yeah, I think it's thousands and thousands of pounds, and quite cramped from the pictures I've seen. I've been in a Concorde. Have you? Yeah, they have one at Duxford Air Museum. It's the Royal, uh, the Imperial War Museum in Duxford. Um, they have uh, they have a Concorde there. It wasn't one of the commercial ones. It was one of the test Concords, one of the first ones that was ever built. Okay. So inside, you go in, you can get a general grasp of the size, but um, it has lots of like testing equipment in it and stuff. But now, have you seen? Craig, they have Project Sunrise, which is something Qantas are doing. Qantas are going to be launching f direct flights from Sydney to London. Really? Yeah, they're like about 18 hours, I believe. The special planes that are formula uh, been done for them. Uh, and the cabin classes are different because um, basically you fly first class, you get your own room, essentially. It's right. like a flying room. And the business class is bigger. I don't think there's any economy class in them. I think they are premium economy only. Uh, and 
really, really expensive to fly that route. But um, you well. can currently fly London to Perth, or you can fly London to Darwin at the moment, but that's the furthest you can go. But yeah, they're also going to fly Sydney to New York as well. OK. Uh, Soon there'll be nowhere you can't fly directly to. It's amazing. That'll probably be me never experiencing that then. I don't know. Give it a few years when the price comes down, I think. I'd like to think maybe it'll become a bit more affordable for all. Be good if it is. It'd be good to uh, give it a shot and see. I don't know if I feel about 18 full hours on a plane, though. 18 hours. They will have little areas on them, so even... Uh, in the premium economy cabin, they've still got like a little bar area and yeah. a wellness zone where you can go and stretch and have a sit down on like a sofa and stuff. So, yeah. That I mean, it does take, good. it is an ordeal getting to Australia. It's 20, it takes 24 hours with a stop when you yes. get there. I would love to go into, uh, I'd love to go to Australia. Mm, it's a great country. Yeah, I could imagine. I really could imagine from what I've seen, just a beautiful place. Beautiful place. Uh, I'm actually just about to answer Erin's question in my ear, saying, why have my pearls got circles? Why have they got circles on your pearls? And that is because cause these are the lighter ones. What I've done in the past is I've coloured them in. So I've coloured them in with my uh, classic pen or my tri-blend pen and then let them dry. And then when I remove them from the carrier sheet, I'm left with the little outer circle from the back. So that's why they've got little red circles all the way around. But there we go. Gorgeous. Go That's get blooming stand gorgeous. Up on my glass mat. He says I'm gonna to have to hold that one up. Not on the glass mat. Let's give that another burnish. Burnish the back. There we go. I think that's been on the gin. Amazing. I guess you could put a little, little stay in it if you wanted to, couldn't you? you know, like a little, a little stay, like a little... You know, two pieces of cardstock, like, together, you know, and a piece of cardstock with a fold in the middle and then two little folds at the end and then glue it together so it stops it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No. Take a little piece of cardstock, a couple of inches long, put a tiny score at one end, tiny score at the other end, fold those back, mountain fold, put a little valley fold in the middle, and then glue it on the inside of your card so it stops it opening too far. Yeah. Get it? No. <laughs> he so does get it. He's winding me up. <laughs> that cheeky grin. Uh, right, let me share with you again then what you're getting in here. So you will get, oh, you're getting a great save. You're not, well, you're paying for two of these. Uh, and you are getting six. So you're going to get the uh, Dancing Butterflies, Shining Stars, Fleur de Lis, that's a Fleur de Lis, the Pretty Florals, the Lily Border, and also the Joyful Hearts, all coming your way. Brilliant value there. They are double sided dies. You will need double sided die plates. We've got you covered there. We've got a great deal on a duo of the small one and the large one. So you've got the best of both. They are, however, if you want them, available individually as well. Uh, I'll give you the details for the plate bundle there. It is £21, $27 there. Oh, we're going to gnomes. I didn't, I, I don't think I ever had them. <laughs> gnome. Oh, gnome. Oh, gnome, 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 gnome. I don't know where they are. Oh, I've got them. Here. They are here. Shall I show you some samples as well? Should you? Should we have a look? Ah. It's no joke, is it? Oh no, these are the Christmas. These are my. Th oh, I've got a mixture of. I've got Christmas gnomes and I've got I've got summer gnomes as well. Got a bit of both. Set for the year through. I'll show you a few of them. Here we are. Love this one here, Craig. Look at that double stepper or side stepper. Isn't that amazing? Love the glasses. Uh, we also have this one just here. Oh, he's got a sort of, he's got a grey white beard. I love the caravan. I think it's so fun, that caravan. So that's having an idea of what you can do with them. Let me pop those over there. A bit discombobulated today, I apologise. Uh, let's also share this with you. So it is the, the Garden Gnomes collection, or Summer Gnomes as I like to call them. 
uh, and you get a lot in here. So you're going to get your 36 sheet pad. You've got your card panels in there, but then also all of your different pattern papers, which are all, of course, designed to work beautifully with this collection. So you are receiving those. You are then getting this, which is your uh, gnome caravan. That one's coming included for you. You've got your gnome swing there as well. Then you've got this one, which is your gnome accessories. You've got all of your different sentiment stamps. They're going to come in there for you. You've got the gnome boy, uh, which gives you the stamps, the dies, and also the stencils to add the different texture. I'd say more of a man. I don't know many boys that can grow a beard like that. Uh, and we've also got uh, the gnome girl in there too. She can be a little fairy girl if she wants to be also. And then you've got the gnome scene. Also, 66 99 or 82 85 gets you all of it. Uh, and it's a really lovely sized collection. You'll be able to make a lot of projects using that, even though there's not a huge amount of items in there. You'll be seeing that in our Second Chance Sunday show, which will be coming to you at 6 p.m. here in the UK, 1 o'clock on the East Coast, 10 a.m. over on the West Coast. It's a great chance for you to see all of the fabulous recent launches. Well, I've really messed that shot up for you, Nicola, haven't I? Look at the state of it. We've got samples in one side, <laughs> boards chucked in the other side. I'll tidy that up in a moment. Uh, let's take you back through, then, these timeless borders. In here, you're going to get the Rose Garden. I love that. It reminds me of the Rose Gold collection slightly, this one. Got a yes, kind of feel to I it. see that. Then you've got the foliage. That reminds me of a sheet from the farmhouse collection as well. Yeah. You know, the one with the foliage in it. No, a sheet. Uh, the butterflies, dragonflies. It's a genre. Uh, Ditsy Daisy. And you've got the wildflowers as well. 38.35 or 47.75, which is brilliant. We are fast running out of time. We've got about four minutes left on this show. Susan says, I just, I mean, I wouldn't want to scare Munger, so definitely fact check this. But Susan said, I just read an article that there is a shortage of pilots. Airlines are considering lowering their standards. Oh, Pam Patton says, that crazy, that colour combo is fantastic. I'm going to use that colour combo and make a couple of things today before I forget and keep one of them on my display shelf in my craft room. Thanks. Barbara says, lovely card. Susan says, Craig, it's a wonderful colour combo. Carrie says, I'm not sure about the colours, but I love the way it's turned out. Um, Mary Pat says, lovely card, Craig. Susan says, what's that? What's funny? What did we do? Susan says, Joe, I got it. Laurie says, I get it. I can't remember what this was about. Any ideas? No. Uh, Susan says, Joe, I finished my gnome card with a pickaxe, hammer and tequila bottle. Amazing. She also says, I love the team backgrounds. Gnome paper is gorgeous. And Gilmore says, foliage ed edibles remind me of the Woodland Friends. That might have been what it's reminding me of. I might have got my Woodland Friends and my farmhouse confused there for a moment. You never know. Any questions you've got, get them into us. You know the drill. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion, if you are over on YouTube, or YouTube as they call it in Birmingham. What would you like to show us next, Craig? We're going to use... The rose garden for this one so we're going to make a really big box but we're going to do it so that uh, the panels are all individual so you would be able to do this for your really really small die cutting machine and as i say it's going to be the rose garden so let's take these last little bits out from before and i'm using some of that peachy tone cardstock you were showing earlier so let's take all these ones from the sorbet so take this one, and I've got four of them, two inches by six and a quarter, and I've got four all exactly the same. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the edge of my card. So let's take our low tack tape, bring it to the edge. So this is going to be a nice way to decorate all of the edges of your box lid without having to do them all onto the edges of the box lid cutting the die into them, that is. We can do them all separate. So I'm going to run one through. I tell you what, let's, I know, let's go in. Let's do, uh, so I've already done the Ditsy Daisy. Let's do wildflowers as well. Let's do a mix of two. So let's mix it up a bit. So let's take this one as well. And we can then do the same. So let's take our low tack tape. 
secure this one into place. So a couple of the edges will be with the rose garden and a couple of the edges will be with the wild flowers. So tape that one on there and then there. And then I'll go through my box, which is half made. So I've gone in with my big A3 Centura apparel, and I want the actual Centura apparel side to be on the inside, the hint of silver. So I've got it so that the white is going to be the outside of the box. So I've cut my card to uh, 11 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter, and I have scored on the ba base side of the box at two and a half inches. And then for the lid, what I've done is I've cut it to 10 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. And when it comes to the box lid, I've scored it two inches. So then what we've got is our box lid all the way around the top. So let's come in with these two here. Let's take these bits off. And I'm just gonna take them. Uh, the I got it reference, Craig, was about me trying to explain a stand to you. Ah, got ya. I see what you mean now. The stand. The stand. Still don't get it, but... You do. You're just being facetious, I know you. Are you being facetious? Or is it more cantankerous? I'm not sure. Oh. Yes. You've been... Cantankerous what means... What do the day toilet paper? We did... Um, we had to Google it the other day because I used it and don't know what it means, but... Um, so you've used it again? It means bad tempered, arg argumentative, and uncooperative. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Cantankerous. Cantankerous. Um, rambunctious is one of my favourites as well. Which means. Rambunctious, uncontrollably exuberant and boisterous. Okay. That's me a lot of the time. Yeah, that's what children are normally, yeah. or me. Rambunctious. I've been called a lot of things. Well, I think rambunctious is a compliment, to be honest. Hey, I hate it. If you mean that in a compliment, then let's take it. Oh, I refer to myself as rambunctious, ram, rambunctious all the time. You know when you get up and you're in one of those really good moods where you're just like, la, 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 in the morning? That's a rambunctious mood as far Is as it? I'm concerned. Right. You know the ones. You're laughing, but you know the ones I mean. That one. Do you never just spring out of bed some days and you're like... Life is a gift and today is going to be fabulous. No. Is it just me? Ah. Uh, that's me like half the time. No, I don't get up in a, as in a downer, but I don't get jumping out of bed thinking... Do you not wake up some mornings and you just open your eyes and you think, today is going to be an incredible day? I do think that sometimes, but I don't jump but out of bed literally from the moment you wake dance, up, you're you like, know, like the oh, granddad smiling. out of Willy Wonka. Oh. Yeah, I don't do that. Oh, that's a shame. That's just you. That's, that's just you, mate. Let's pop these little bits out. I'm going to pop them out. And while I've got all these loose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my gems. I've got some of these ones that are like a... You're a wee gem, Craig. Ah, and Aren't you nice? Aren't you sweet? I am. I'm going to go in with these gems here. I'm going to pop a few scattered about, just some of them, not all of them. I know, as, as crafters, I know you've got so many gems and embellishments at home. Use whichever ones you so wish. So I'll do a couple there. And then I'm going to do a couple here. That's giving it a nice decorative edge, not only with the die cut piece, but also with the little gems. So let's pick them up. Let's take these ones into here, so move them to the side, and then I'm going to go in with a couple of these ones, so let's do one there, and then let's do one there, and then I'm going to go in, if we can find kind of the same size. This is a lot of borders, isn't it? Yeah, well, because it's going to go on all four edges of the box, 
want to make sure that I've got enough. Uh, right, I'll leave it for now and I can come back. Okay, talk. Them to the side. And then what we can do is let's do my box base and then we can start to decorate the box lid with our border elements. I was, I was, did you, was, was my mic up then? <laughs> I was just, it's the first time it's ever happened to me. I was just answering Erin. She was telling me what I was going to do next. I went, oh, wonderful. I used to something else. I went, oh, marvellous. <laughs> That's never, ever happened to me before. Uh -huh. I wonder, because I, I couldn't even hear her. So I was like, what are yeah. you um, talking to? I'm so sorry. I don't know what's gotten into me. Just sounded like I was really agreeing with what you were doing, apparently. With what I was doing, with was it. that? You could have got away with it, then. Maybe, actually, I was listening to both of you at the same time. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what it was. We'll go with that. Yeah, maybe that's exactly this what it was. This looks like a box you'd get two custard slices in from the baker's, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. yeah. It's exactly that size, isn't yeah. it? You know, I'll have an apple turnover and a cream horn, please. Thank you. And then you go in with, yeah, that fancy box for it. Mmm. Yeah. So we're going to go in with these ones and another bit of the uh, peach tone and then some of that 6x6 six six pattern paper pad that you showed earlier from Garden of Love. And then I'm going to mat and layer these ones into the middle, into here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer this into the lid of my box. Then I'm going to assemble the lid and then I'm going to put my panels on separately. That's just my preferred way to do it, and that's separately. You can then layer the panels on when um, the lid is flat out like this. I'm going to pop that into the middle, press that in, and then if I take these ones off, assemble the lid, and then I can then, as I say, go in with the panels, the die-cut panels. Amazing. Karen Fisher said, I started watching the show on my phone and earbuds and then decided to launch the show on the big screen and forgot to take my earbuds out. So my husband walks into the room and sees me watching TV, volume up, my earbuds on. He started cracking up. Some days I'm a genius and then there are days I can't perform simple tasks. That's hilarious. That's good. That's, that is good. That. I like that. My AirPods, Craig, I charge them. May, I reckon Aaron will know the answer to this question. I charge them until they're fully charged. I have them in my pocket for like two weeks, haven't used them. I go back to them, they're flat. Should they still have charging after two weeks or is that too long? I think they should still be fully charged after two weeks. I would have thought so. I think there's a problem. Yeah. Pam e says Craig seems hyper focused on this box. I, should... I think he just loves it. I, I, I'm quite chuckled with this box. Right up, his right up his Straza. Yeah. A big dimensional box that you'd be able to do with a scoreboard and even a Gemini Mini. No problem. So let's go into I did my tape onto the backs of these ones. So I'm going to alternate these ones. So let's go in with this one here. So we're going to go in with our wild flower. So this oh, is where. Wild. Sorry? Wild. <laughs> this is um, why I like to do them when my box lid is assembled. So I've got my wildflower on one, so I'm going to go right to the opposite side and do the wildflower on the opposite side. So we can take this one off and then press that one into place. And then let's take that one on there. And then we can turn this one around. So I'm going to take the back and off of these. And if we go corner to corner, and I've got some ribbon that I'm also going to wrap around. So you're not necessarily going to see these corners. So let's pop that one into place there. And then what I'm going to do, so it's all held in place. I'm going to go in with my red liner tape. And then kind of like in between the lid and these little perforation dots, I'm going to run some of my red liner tape. So this is the three millimetre red liner tape all the way round. So let's get that into place. The ribbon that I'm using is six millimetres. So therefore, don't worry about if your red liner tape's not exactly straight because you've got a lot of give from the ribbon. So let's work our way around the rest. And then 
carry on working our way till it meets up. Take that one off, take that one off, and then we're going to go all the way round. I'm going to take all the red liner tape off, and then I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in with my um, ribbon. So what I would recommend is come in towards the middle of your box lid, and then I'm going to come in a little bit further in, and then I'm just going to hold it with my finger, stretch, and then hold it with my finger, and then stretch. I'm going to keep going all the way round, holding and stretching, and running my finger over the back where that red liner tape is underneath. And then by going into the middle here, that means you're not going to see the edge because if I come in with this bow that I've tied, let's place that one here over the top. Whereas as if you had the corners of the ribbon at the side, they're going to start to fray and they're going to start to come to bits. And then if I press that one in, you could go in with a sentiment into the top if you want to. Maybe a die cut sentiment, stamp sentiment, that's up to yourself. But by creating a really big, substantial, deep box, but by able to do them with the small, timeless border dies, you can do four of, uh, one of each design, four of the designs if you want, or it could be all the designs, two of each and two of each as I've done here. That's up to you. But then there we go. Amazing, absolutely awesome project that you could have done with any one of these edibles or any of your edibles, I imagine, uh, as long absolutely. as they are the correct depth for that matter. Yep. Um, Laurie Barnett is my kind, of, my kind of person. She says, I can jump out of bed ready for a good day, go straight to make a pot of coffee, jump in and click in my heels, then finish off with a sock slide through the kitchen. <laughs> Oh, happy day. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, Shadaya says, Prince Joy, I use words such as, such as every day. I had one colleague who was being belligerent, so I asked her, why is she being so cantankerous? So she said, what does that mean? I said, open up your phone and Google it. <laughs> then she said, how do you spell it? I had to even tell her how to spell it in syllables. Wow. wow. I love that. She says, what am I like? <laughs> <laughs> Blue and Craft says your phone uses power assessing the networks and background system and apps. Yeah, but this is just my, um, it's just my AirPods. So is it that they're, I don't know why, yeah, I'm not uh -huh. sure. I need to charge, I'm sure I fully charge them and then they were flat. Not good. Uh, Janine Quartier says, uh, can't wait for the next show. Nice just to sit and watch some awesome projects. What a pretty box says. What a pretty box says Alexia. Uh, and Bubble and Squeak says the box. That box is a corker Craig. All it needs is a a cat chill cat. What's a cat chill cat? A cat chill cat. What is a cat chill cat? C H I L L W C C A T. Chill cat. Do let me know what a chill cat is, please, Bubble and Squeak. I'd love to know. Let me recap what you're getting in that particular collection, then. You are getting the Rose Garden, with the flourishing foliage, butterflies, dancing dragonflies, the Ditsy Daisy, and also the wildflowers as well. 38, 35, 47, 75. Right, Crafters Inspiratione. We're going to start off with the brand new one, Crafters Inspiration 4. Absolutely love and adore these. So many great things in here. I'll just quick try and quickly go through them because you're getting so much in there. You are getting loads of die cut toppers in here, papers, you've got stamps. I believe you've got dies in this one as well, but I don't know. I think someone's. Oh, there they are. There's a the star. You get the nesting dies in there too. They're, a br they're such amazing value. And what you get is you get the um, issue for the magazine with all the different projects, 79 projects in that one. If you want to get the brand new one, absolutely you can right now. Uh, and we also have some of the, oh, sorry, let me just pop those into here. Uh, you, we do have some of the earlier issues for you as well, if you may be new to this. So that was number four. Uh, we also have number two for you. This is number two. Oh, you get one and two together there for the same price as, ah! Oh, it's a BOGO, or a BOGOF. BOGO? Bogoff. BOGOF, BOGO, who, tomato, tomato. Uh, 12 99 you buy one, you get one free. I said, you buy one. You get one free. You do, thank you for that. Right, next up, we are going to, oh, we're going to the word edibles. We just pop down into the, 
So let's grab those, there we are. Uh, these ones here, these are absolutely gorgeous. Love the fact that if you've got a card to make, they've got to kind of create a card-esque feel to them because they do so much in just one pass. You've got happy birthday in here, firstly, which is this one. You've also got just for you. You've got with all my love, congrats, you did it on your special day and also special friend as well. 46.76 or 53.82 is your price on those. So definitely snap those up. Craigle, Bagel, what would you like to share with us on these? Right, let's use these ones. And we're going to do a Z full card for this one. I'm going to do a little bit of inking as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the happy birthday and I've got my multi-purpose card stock. So I've got it so it's cut to 11 and 3 quarters by 4 inches and I've scored it 6 inches and I've scored it 9 inches. So this has given me the start of my Z fold. And then we're going to go in with the happy birthday die. So within this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer that up into that initial panel of the cardstock. And then let's use our low tack tape to tape down. So it's just going to go through our junior. So let's run that one through and then same plate configuration as always. So we're going to run that one through. I have then got Water Reactive Ink Spring Meadow, Honey Pot, Parakeet and Fuchsia. So I've got them and I've just got my finger daubers to the side of me. So these are a bit quicker than going in with the blending tools. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out to start with. So let's release our tape. Let's take the top. Just carefully prise that one out. Take it out. And then what I can do is I'm going to come along and where the edge of that die cut ends, I'm going to snip that away. And then down the crease of the card, I'm going to cut until I get to that center cut line. And then we're just going to snip that out. So then that's given us our happy and our birthday. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to take some of that excess paper out. It's not essential if it all comes out because what I'm going to do is pop it back in so it just slots back into place. And then it's going with our ink. So spring meadow, honey pot, parakeet, and then fuchsia. And I'm going to go in. So if I Pick the finger dauber for honey pot, and I'm going to start to go in on top of some of the dye. So within these ones, with it being metal, just means that you'll be able to wipe the ink off afterwards. If we can go in, take that one off here, ink these ones up. I'm just going to leave my dauber there in case I need it again. And then, so that's the top of the happy. And then I'm going to go and start to blend that spring meadow in to here. So blend them in to play. Let's get that going. Really start to get that colour in there, into the die cuts. We found out what chill cat was, Craig. Did it we? It was actually a cat emoji that I hadn't copied across properly from YouTube, so YouTube What's happened, not been able to copy the emoji, so I just put chill with cat instead. Okay. Must be what the emoji is called. So uh -huh. it should have been, that just needs a cat, cat emoji. Instead we've got, that needs a cat, chill with cat. Yeah. Oh, well then. <laughs> uh, Rhonda says, low, the emoji was of a cat in a box. YouTube just made that up, chill with cat. There you are. Did wonder what it was. I've never heard of it before. But now we know. So I'm now going in with a parakeet. Just going into all of these little nooks and crannies here. So some of them you will just need to really prise your blending tool or your finger dauber in just to get that colour to go through. So I'm going to go into there, ink up into here, and then let's go in with that one there, and then that one there. And then if I go in with the fuchsia, let's go in with the bunt in. So do the bunt in, in with these ones. So pick that one up there and then there. And then I think 
down at the present there. Blend that in. I think this is so clever that you can ink through these. I'm guessing, would you, would it help to, you could emboss with these as well, do you say, Craig? Uh, yeah, I would highly recommend that you emboss with them as well. So cut them, emboss them, then come along with your colour in mediums and colour over the top. And then what you're left with is a coloured backdrop. So basically, all the bits that would then be embossed will be embossed, but they'll also be coloured as well. So all that I need to do is I just need to continue that edge along it. So I'm just going to use my scissors as a rough guide. You can use your craft knife, of course, if you want to, to be able to make it even easier. So let's chop that along here. So if I bring in now my card blank, so my card blank, which is six by six, and fold it in half, as you would expect from a card blank, and then folded it back on itself. So I just need to go in with my pattern papers, which are from our uh, mix and match pad that we have. Layered them up with some of this deep turquoise. And it's a nice, fun way to use your uh, sentiment, your everyday word edibles and with different cards as well, not necessarily on the edge or the top of a card. It's nice to use them in a concept way or cut out a panel and die cut the centre. It's similar to what I've done here. So instead of obviously having that excess, just cut it straight into a panel. That could be a separate topper if you want to, the top of a box. Sam McDonald says, Craig, I could watch you all day, every day. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Ah, oh, bless you. Thank you. Isn't that lovely? That's really kind. You've got incredible followers here. We do. You really do. <laughs> <laughs> that heart, Nicola. <gasps> that heart. Nick has just said, wow, try having to work with him. <laughs> She's a funny egg. She's been very sassy, yeah. She was very sassy when I was talking to myself and Erin were trying to have a conversation yes, earlier. Dagger to the heart. Very sassy. She's all about the impactful questions, let's put it that way. I'm a delight to work with. An absolute delight. Your turn, Joe. They've just said lovely things in my ear in the gallery. Your turn. <laughs> uh, very busy on these 40s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love working with you, Craig. You know that. Oh, of course I do. You know that. You don't need me to tell you how brilliant you are. I'm getting, it's getting to that point of the fake Friday where I'm slightly delusional, Craig. You are, No, yeah. not delu delusional, is that Delusional? No, I don't think it is. Yeah, that's a word. Is it? Okay. Delirious? I mean, it is a word, whether it's the right one or Delirious. not. Delirious? Delirious, thank you. I mean, I think I've just really proved my point there, haven't I? <laughs> I get that. I'll just throw words at you. Mm. Throw words, see what comes out. One of them will be right. First Ian one. wants to know why you didn't emboss it this time, Craig. Because I forgot. Because he forgot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go, Thea. How do you say silly sausage in Dutch, Thea? Do let me know. Because Thea's in the Netherlands, that's why. Because he's a silly sausage, you've got to emboss it. It's not essential. No, absolutely not. But I did just forget. I just want to know how to say silly sausage in Dutch. I forgot. Bubble and Squeak wants to know if when you say stamping card, you mean multi-purpose card. I do indeed, It's yeah. the artist formerly known as stamping card, isn't it? It is indeed. It is. So, yeah, it's our um, multi-purpose card. I've done well not slipping up for a good, good couple of weeks now. Sorry? I've done well not slipping up and calling it stamping card. Yeah, you have done very well. Yeah. So, I'm pressing that into place here. Let's add another couple of gems, seeing that I've got them to the side of me. So pop in that one there, put in one there, and then pop one there. And then what I've got, a little bit of ribbon. Let's go in with our 
glue gel and then I'm going to add that there and add that at an angle and then there we go we've got our Z fold card now you could put a piece of course in that back but if you so wish there but we've got happy birthday but using it in the Z fold card amazing right let me recap then these word edibles for you in here you're going to get happy birthday to you you will also get just for you which is this one here just for you yeah with all my love then you've got congrats you did it you really did it this time uh on your special day which is that one there and special friend. friend. Special friend. Special friend. Karen World Sorrel says, Craig, I could also watch you all day. Every day, your projects are amazing. Also, you're very entertaining with Ben, Joe, or whoever you work with. Amazing. On the subject of questions, oh, or that we did that one, sorry. Jenny, Jeanine. Jean, no, it says, it's spelt like Jean, but it's got an Ean on the end. Jeanine. Jeanine Joint Emery says, love this card, so bright and happy, makes me smile. Isn't that Good. Isn't that glorious? Craig or Bagel, it's time for... I've adopted that, by the way, from Becky R. Have you? Uh, I, I, I actually think it's, it just rolls off the tongue so beautifully, doesn't it, Craig or Bagel? Uh, mm, should we do card of the show? You've got a lot in this uh, masterclass. Yeah, I think I've got them in the order that I've done them. Not wanting to stand up, is it? There we go. There we go. Let's take. There we go. There we are. So, I'll hold it. There we go. So, number one, we've got number two, number three, number four, or number five. So, let's show you that one. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Get voting uh, over on Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters TV on YouTube. Susan says, I'm bummed. Uh, all of Craig's ribbons are pre-made. Would love to see how his bow tying demo. He makes bow tying uh, so easy. What do you think, Craig or Bagel? You can do it if you want. I've got loads let's, of ribbon with me. Let's do it. Um, I am like Tom Cruise. Are you? Yeah. In every respect. I do all of my own crafty stunts. Do you? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I'm just going to... You get ready for your bows then, or your stunts, as you like to call them, uh, and I'll just show people these new scene building guys. These, I hadn't seen these, I must say. But they look amazing, don't they? <laughs> Are they new as in, like, we haven't launched them yet? Ah, they launched on the 16th. That's why I haven't seen them. But look at how amazing they are. Absolutely brilliant. I'm going to show you the dies that you can put these together with in just a secondo. Uh, so let me let me grab these and share with you exactly what you've got. I think it's second, it's second in uh, Spanish, isn't it? Secondo? Mm. I, when I try and speak Spanish, I just put a bit of accent on and put an O on the end of everything. Thank you, O. Please, O. Uh, anyway, let's uh, have a look at these. This is your woodland beauty. Oh, what a beauty. Is it Segunda? Segunda. Simple pleasures. Is this one just here? I think that looks... She looks like she could be in, like, Central Park or somewhere, doesn't she? Very, very lovely. This one here is butterfly borders that you've got. Uh, so that you love that one. And celebrate your day. Celebrate good times, come on. You can get all of those, 85.99 or 104.95 is your price on there. Are you ready for your ball? Let's do it. Do a ball. Let's do it. Right here. So, we've got a ribbon. So as I always say when I go to tie it, whenever anyone says, ah, Craig doesn't tie his own balls. That's I love to balls. know where you buy them from, actually. I can, I, I, I can tell you where I get my ribbon. Where? If I'm not using our products, who am I using? Dawn. N well, no. N n okay, um, that's gone down the, down the path there. Just through Newcastle, sticks to. Oh, okay. You know. Do they do ribbon? Yeah, no, I didn't know that. that. You know what guys that better. Yeah, yeah, Nicholas just said, well, FYI, you do use a lot of other brands. Thanks, Nicola, for that one. But yes, 
No. Hunky dory, don't I mean, it could have been any of them. Yes. Well, it's not. It is, it is sticks to his air in a way. Mocked me, didn't he? I got it ribbon. wrong. Laughed in my face. Do you want to see this ribbon? No, not particularly. No. Oh, oh, demo or not. Right, come on, let. <laughs> There's people at home waiting to see. They want to see this demo. I can see the top of my head here. Yeah, go on, carry That's on. That's good. Good for you. We don't want to see that. I might put a bow on it. I might put a bow over your mouth. <laughs> uh, so only forget it tied. <laughs> well, you've got five minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff he's got his back. Right, yo. So, so as I said. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got a ribbon. So, go in. We're going to loop it round our two fingers here. So, we're going to loop that in. So, we've got our two loops. We're going to cross it over. We're crossing that one over. So, we've got our X. So we've got our two loops there. We're going to turn that one under so we can just see it popping out from the bottom. We're going to pull that one out. I pop my thumbs into each one and then I'm going to move them in and then we're going to manipulate the bottom of the boat, getting that into position. And then what we can do is then we can pull and then pull, get it the way that we want and then there we go. So just quickly, so we've got a ribbon, we'll get our two loops, we're going to cross that over, and then this one, we're going to tuck it under, so it's starting to come out the bottom, pull that one out, just get a hold of it, and then I pop the thumb in, and then I, the reason I pop my thumbs in is I just get more of that loop, that clean loop when it comes to the ribbon, get it in position, hold the centre, Pull it in, and then there is the perfect bow. So there you go. Beautiful. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, Bubble Squeak says, maybe sticky tape, ta low-tack tape over Joe's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lily had a question as well, which was the Gemini sandwich combination for if you are using the embossing mat. I think, yes, I think they mean the embossing mat with the... With the... With, with the, the Oh, it fell off. Oh. I look like that. I look a bit like a. I look a bit like that Shih Tzu, don't I? So, so, so is that in, embossing, uh, die cutting with the die, and then embossing it afterwards, or just embossing the die? I think it was a die. Oh, I think it was a die and an embossing mat. I think. Was right. What got you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. See what you mean. So, you're. Um, an embossing folder that's a cut and emboss folder that's got a die inside, it's still just your two cutting plates. So same as a normal 2D embossing folder. So a normal 2D embossing folder and a cut and emboss folder, folder with a die in it, it's your two cutting plates. Amazing. And then with your 3D embossing folder, that is then one cutting plate, magnetic shim, and then plastic shim. So hopefully that helps. I think then what she might have been getting at, Craig, is what is the combo? Beautiful, isn't it? What is the combo if you are, want to emboss a die with the embossing mat? Right. Have I literally got a minute to do it? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's got, got a couple of minutes actually. Tell you what, uh, card of the show, Craig, while you're there, is Dem. Do you think this ribbon suits me, Craig? I do. If only I had slightly longer hair, I could have one in the front of my hair, like a little dog. Right over the ear. Yeah, I can't stick it in my hair though, unfortunately. So it has to go on my. It has to go when my hairline is receding as well. Popped it now. Ah. It's actually quite good at disguising that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't shut you up though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, big snort. Two pounds for that one. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, oh I'll get a bit straw, so I do. Yeah, what was the demo of the show? I don't care now. Uh, I've given up. I'm going home. Uh, no, number three. <laughs> What's knocking in the gallery? Number three. Number three. The double sided. Oh, I'm shook off. I didn't think it'd be that one. Yeah. There we go. So that one's going to go up against myself for the rest of the day. But tell you what, let's take one of these edgeable dies, so the sentiment edge. So let's cut it to start with. So we're going to run that one through, so whether it's on the edge of a card, top fold of the card, that doesn't really matter. What I want to do is just get that so it cuts. And then what you will need, of course, to emboss it, is you'll need your uh, embossing mat. So this, this is the way that I 
uh, always remember to do it because you never have your magnetic shim and embossing mat together. So what I do, while all my plates are still in place, I flip it over and then I put my embossing mat over the die cut detail, put my cutting plate back into place, turn it around and then I remove my magnetic shim. Then we run that one through again. So therefore, we've taken out that magnetic shim, we've replaced that embossing mat at the bottom, and that embossing mat's going to push through the card and the die, and then that's going to enable you to have embossed detail all the way around. So let's take that one off. And then you've got all, I know it's hard, oh, you can just see it around here, all that embossed detail. So that's the way that I always remember to do it. So hopefully that helps. Excellent. Uh, well, we're out of time, Craig. We uh, are. Massive thank you to you. Massive thank you to you guys and you guys and you guys. And uh, we'll see you back here in a couple of hours' time. We will do. Toodle pit. Toodle. Trousers.